This video is about the gang wars happening in the west side of Joburg, specifically West Berry and Eldos. Now the chaos and mayhem happening in that side of town has been making headlines for more than a decade, but the last four years were brutal. To a point where recently, two shot callers from the first guns and the Varados, the two big gangs, were shot and killed. Now this situation creates a very hostile and dangerous environment for the residents. Now to understand where things are, we have to understand where it all started. Now gangs in the west end of Joburg have been around for long, since the days of the original Sophia town, a Johannesburg suburb where black people, coloreds and Indians were living before forced removals. Now this is around the 1920s to the 1940s. You see there were gangs such as the Americans, the Berliners, Gestapos and Vultures. You see, these gangs were largely established as robbery and protection records, and they specialized in petty crimes. They would regularly fight each other for turf. You see, forced segregation led to the creation of neighborhoods such as Soweto, Leneja, Eldorado Park, Westbury and Reveille, amongst others. Now, from the 1980s onwards, a few of the older gangs survived, because some gang members took their knowledge of the criminal economy with them into the designated areas that would become their new homes and the new gangs began to emerge. Now the most significant ones being the first guns and the spudlings, the spudlings which later evolved into becoming the Varados. You see the Varados have been around the streets of Westbury since the 50s and they later became key players in the criminal underworld. Now the other gang is Majimbos who operate mainly in Eldos. Now the sale of Mendrix was a significant milestone as dope dealing over time would empower the gangs. More money started flowing in and guys started having multiple cars, properties and the jewelry game started getting bigger. You see the wolves were fed but this was to the great detriment of the communities in which they operated from. Now at the time, Mendrex was sourced through connections in Soweto. You see, around that time, some of the biggest suspected dealers of Mendrex was Rox Lamin, who was associated with the convicted drug lord Vicky Khoswami, who was from India but also operated in South Africa. You see, Rox disappeared in 1995 on his way to see Ivan Kors. When asked about it, Kosa said he knows nothing about this guy's disappearance. Now another dealer was Keith Motapanyan who was also under investigation for mass Mendrex dealing. Now Keith was murdered by a gunman who stormed a wedding celebration in Orlando West in Soweto. You see, that incident, Dr. Kumalo also got shot by a stray bullet, I think it was around 2002, and he missed the whole season while he was playing for Kaiser Chiefs. Now Vicky Khoswami was a drug lord who was responsible for bringing in about 12 tons of chemicals that were used to produce Mendrex. This was in the early 90s. Now another player in that space during the 80s was the South African army who was also producing Mendrex through Project Coast that was headed by Dr. Voter Basson. Now the fast growing gangs controlled the dope trade and that resulted in Westbury becoming notorious for having the highest Mendrex consumption rate in the country during the mid 90s. Now this includes outsiders coming into Westbury and buying the stuff from there. Now some gangs had strong links to other parts of the country, most notably Cape Town. Now in the 1980s and in the 90s, the Cape Flats, given the population size of the area and the presence of gang-controlled drug distribution networks, you see Cape Town was a very lucrative market. Now Johannesburg-based dope dealers, because of the city's growing external criminal connections, they were well placed to supply the Cape market and a significant amount of Mendrex would be trafficked from Johannesburg to the Western Cape. Now in Joburg, a flood of drugs into the city transformed the western areas of the city, Eldos, Westbury and all these other areas in the west and this marked the beginning of a set of vicious drug theft wars. Kharteng police are still searching for an unknown number of suspects following a spate of alleged gang-related shootings which have left five people dead in Westbury and Eldorado Park. 
and of course gun violence is the big issue in these areas. On Friday four people were shot and killed in Westbury, one person was shot dead in El Dorado Park. Circumstances surrounding the incidents are still unknown at this stage. For more we cross to SABC News reporter Nozin Tombi Mia. Now as the Varados moved into the dope game, it brought them into conflict with other gangs like the Fast Guns, who were already involved in the game. Now the Star newspaper published an article in 1996 showing just how lucrative the dope game was back in those days for some senior members of these gangs. Now in their report, a mother of a slain Varados gang member, Sam Jacobs, was reported as claiming that her son was making as much as 1.2 million rands a month in selling mandrakes. Now adjusted with inflation, in today's money that would have been 5.5 to 6 million rands. That's a lot of money a month. Now there was no room for independent dealers in this rapidly consolidating drug trade in the area. Now to control the market, you needed power to keep everybody in check and put fear in their hearts. And that could only be found in a strong game. Now the accumulation of capital in the dope game allowed diversification of criminal activities. Now the bigger gangs such as the Varados and the Fast Guns started having offsprings such as the Colored Kids and others. Now these new gangs and the younger members of the established gangs were deployed to operate the lucrative market in the stolen vehicle chop shops and they also traded in stolen goods but the smaller gangs they operated under the umbrella of the bigger gangs. Tiff wars began to escalate during the cycle as new groups, including Nigerian immigrants, started to enter the dope game, adding to the competition and impacting the market dynamics. Now before this, Westbury dealers had cornered the market for drug supply. However, when Nigerian drug dealers began to emerge, gangs in Westbury had a set of alternative sources from whom they could buy the weight. Now the new Nigerian suppliers also pushed down market prices and this forced existing gangs to expand their territory in a bid to sustain profit levels. Now the disruption led to violent theft wars which peaked in 1996. Now the deaths that resulted from these drug wars triggered more violence and a cycle of revenge hits. Now by the mid 90s, the fast guns considered to be the most organized gang controlled most of the drug territory in Westbury followed by the Varados. You see, gangs were changing and they were becoming increasingly turned up. Death has become common in West Berry. And on this day, a 44-year-old man and a 21-year-old from the community are buried next to each other. Both of them shot dead. This one that we have today, a D-male Delvin Nancho, aka Stachim, that was shot in a shack, um, three, four of them, and um, he is the one that has become late. And, um, and here, just next to us, there's um, Sebastian Samuels that was also shot, and um, unknown because uh, with the hoodies and um, the, the face mask, you can't identify who's who in the zoo. The men are two of four gunshot victims in a space of just two weeks. It's believed these killings are as a result of gangs fighting over territory to sell drugs. Now, some community members claim that two prominent figures who were known by their street names, Keenan and Finch, were behind much of the drug trade and gang violence that ravaged Westbury and Nuclear since 2014. Now, Keenan was Keenan Ibrahim, and Finch was the street name for Leroy Brown. Now both were allegedly linked to protection records and both had become involved in the minibus taxi industry, servicing Westbury and other surrounding areas. It has been reported in the past that a relative of Finch was said to have been a member of the Fast Guns and according to the source, Finch was able to take over much of the territory previously controlled by the Fast Guns. Now by 2014, Reflecting on the degree of criminal consolidation, Finch apparently controlled large sections of the drug territory in the hood of Westbury. 
Now Finch allegedly was the leader of the Varados and he was linked to Majimbo's gang and was allegedly running a sophisticated network of dope dealers. Now according to the police, Finch knew exactly what revenue he would expect from each corner and if money at a particular corner drops, Finch would expect answers and if he was not satisfied with the answers, the corner operator would be repurposed or even taken out. You see, he made visits to his territory accompanied by two bodyguards who were thought to have been off-duty officers. Now, Finch was also involved in the property business, which many suspect that he was using that business to launder the proceeds from the drug dealing. Now, Keenan was alleged to have entered the dope game in Westbury heavily around 2013. Now, some gang members claim he invested an inheritance from a family member to establish himself as a big player in the area. He was linked to the fast guns and some claim he was one of the leaders. Now, according to one resident, once Keenan moved into the dope game in Westbury, fiction emerged between him and Finch and that led to an upsurge in gang violence. Now, gangs from the Cape Flats, Eldos and Westbury have formed even closer ties forging relationships that are used to acquire an upper hand over their rivals. It has been reported that Johannesburg gangs have used Cape Town gunmen to carry out hits for them in Joburg. Now in 2017, a police officer confirmed in the Star newspaper that in the past, the first guns have hired shooters from their Cape Town associates to eliminate Majimbos and Varados gang members in the area. Now it appears that Finch also had connections with the Cape gangs and allegedly he had made use of these gunmen as well. It has been reported in the past that Rashid Stahi, former leader of the Hart Livings, had allegedly arranged hits to be carried out in Joburg on drug dealers. Now Stahi would send two to three guys to take someone out and on the same day they would be transported back to the Cape and nobody would even notice them. Now on the 23rd of Feb 2023, leader of the first guns, Keenan, was driving his white Mercedes on William Nicole in Joburg when he was ambushed by unknown gunmen driving a Jetta 6. Now Keenan was shot multiple times and lost control of the vehicle and hit the pavement. Paramedics took him to hospital but he didn't make it. Now a resident who declined to be identified told News24 that he was shot in revenge for the murder of an innocent boy in Westbury who was shot a week before. Now after Keenan was taken out, the streets were up in smoke in Westbury. Bullets were flying, even innocent bystanders were getting shot. Kids were getting killed by stray bullets. It became too dangerous to be outside. Now a ninth person has been shot in Westbury, Johannesburg in the past 24 hours. It comes after Fast Gang's boss, Keenan Sheldon Ibrahim, was killed last Thursday. Residents fear they may be caught in the crossfire of retaliation attacks. They say there have been shootings almost every day and want more police deployed. Now the murder of Keenan came after the killing of a 50-year-old woman who was believed to have been connected to the gang wars or the gang violence in Eldorado Park in Westbury. She was known as the Godmother and allegedly she was affiliated to the first guns. She was shot and killed outside a ShopRite store in Westbury. In October 2019, Keenan was on trial for a murder of a 20-year-old Bradley Souths. Now Bradley was not a gang member. It is alleged that he had killed Royce Makupau, a first guns member at Nuclear Primary School in Westbury on the 24th of July 2018. Now Keenan and nine others appeared in the Gauteng High Court. Now around that time, Finch was also on trial for a murder case for allegedly murdering Regan Jacobs, who is believed to have been a member of the first guns. There was a time where the two guys, Finch and Keenan, were in court at the same time attending these cases and when they met in court a big fight broke out and the cops had to break it off. A suspected gang boss from the West Johannesburg suburb of Westbury will return to court next Thursday. That's for a formal bail application in the Johannesburg High Court. He made a brief appearance in court this morning along with his co-accused Christopher Charles. Brown was in court for the second time this week following a brawl between the Varados and Fast Guns gangs. Brown and Charles were apprehended separately last week for the 2016 murder of a Westbury resident, Regan Jacobs. 
mayhem in the Johannesburg Magistrate Court that quickly transformed the sedate corridors into an action movie scene. On Wednesday, members of the rival Varados and Fast Gun gangs attacked each other ahead of the appearance of leaders Keenan Ibrahim and Leroy Brown. Two suspects involved in the clash were arrested. It even led to the Justice Minister arriving at the scene. Now on Tuesday afternoon, the 21st of November 2023, Finch was leaving Virgin Active Gym on 14th Avenue in Constatia in Joburg with a VW Polo. He was ambushed by gunmen while close to the boom gate and was shot multiple times. He didn't make it. Now according to a source, two suspects got out of a vehicle that they were waiting in and they attacked Finch. The one guy shot him while he was exiting the parking lot and the other one was waiting by the Mercedes C200. Now after they hit, they both got in the car and they disappeared. Now videos and photos of the scene were making rounds on social media after it happened. The opinion over Finch's legacy was also dividing people on social media. While other users have expressed relief over his violent death, others hailed him as a hero. Now residents in the area spoke to the media. They said that members of the rival gangs, the Fast Guns, were celebrating on that night by driving through the area and firing shots in the air. Now as usual, the hood is hot, West Bear is up in smoke, it's not safe to be outside. You see this situation needs government intervention, otherwise more lives are going to be lost. Now fears of retaliation attacks have left residents on edge. I got shot seven times and I'm still here. I just want to thank God that I'm still here. Thank Allah that I'm still here. Just a bit sad about my friend Benjamin that lost his life. So yeah, I just want to... I'm just loving proof of God's wonders. That's all that I can say. You were also shot. Uh, maybe you can share with our viewers. You still have the, the scars on your hand. Uh, I can see there as you were shot. Uh, just tell us about your ordeal. I understand that uh, this happened on the same... Uh, was it the same day that he was shot? Yeah, it was. Um, I don't really remember a lot, but all I remember was gunshots. And as I wanted to look who it was, they shot me in my hand. And they just carried on shooting. And it's just traumatizing to see that my friends is just... They, they, they have to bury my friends and stuff. Yeah, this thing sounds like a movie, man. Otherwise, that's all I got on today's episode. And if you enjoyed the video, as usual, give us a like. We really appreciate it. And if you enjoy the content that we do, follow the page. Yeah, otherwise, man, thank you for watching and peace to everybody.